Hi, welcome to Unit 2, Quiz Practice, Select Solutions, Question 1. All right, in this question, we are told a student mixes 100 milliliters of each reactant in the following four reactions. And then we're given a table of four reactions, and for each reaction, we're given a reactant A and a reactant B. We're asked for question one, which reaction would you expect to have a pH greater than seven? Now that we've read the problem, we need to kind of analyze what it's meaning. So the first thing I want to focus on is pH greater than seven, because that's what I'm asked to find. So what does a pH greater than seven mean? When we're speaking of pH, it's a value that is given to a solution, and that tells us whether or not the solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. So when the pH is less than seven, we know that it's acidic. When it's approximately equal to seven, um, we know that it's neutral. And if it's greater than seven, we know that it's basic. Since we are dealing in the case where we're looking for a pH greater than seven, we're looking for a basic solution. All right, so I know that I need something where um, I need a reaction where at the end I have a basic solution, meaning that there's base in there. So what are two cases when it comes down to a reaction where I can have base um, at the end of the reaction? The first would be if I if one of my reactants is a base and that reactant is an excess. So if I have base as an excess reactant, it's going to be left over at the end of the reaction. So that would make the um, resulting reaction solution basic. That means when the reaction is over, I still have a base, so the solution will be basic. The pH will be greater than 7. The next case is if I made a base, so if one of my products was a base. Well, how can I figure out if I have either an base, my base is an excess or base is a product? What do I need to do? Well, since I'm given two reactants, reaction, reactant A and B, I'm going to write a balanced chemical equation. That is what I need. And that's the first step in my plan. Without a balanced chemical equation, you can't go further. So it's important that you recognize that that's one of the first things that you need to do. All right, we're gonna do that for each of these. Um, and because we're only given the reactants, we're not given the products, we're gonna to have to predict the products. To help us predict the products, we are going to think about what type of reaction it is before we start writing our balanced chemical equation. And when I say what type of reaction, we've been looking at two types of reaction here, acid-base neutralization and precipitate reaction. For an acid-base neutralization, we have an acid and a base. They mix together to form a salt in the water. For a precipitate reaction, we have two salts that mix together and form two new salts. And one of those salts, at least one, should be a solid or a precipitate in order for the reaction to go. If both are aqueous, so both are soluble salts that we produce, then there's no reaction. So let's take a look at the first one. What type of reaction do we have here? To figure that out, you have to look at reactant A and B and determine if you have if they are acid, bases, or salts. If they're if one's an acid and one's a base, you know it's a neutralization. If both are salts, you know it's a precipitate. Okay, so for reaction A, it's NaOH is a base, um, and reactant B is a salt. So wait a minute, this is the base and that's a salt? What's going on here? Oh, wait a second. Remember, NaOH is a, a base because it's a metal hydroxide, but it's also a salt because it has a metal and a non-metal. So metal hydroxides are bases, but they're also salts. So essentially we have two salts mixing together. That makes this a precipitate reaction. Okay, so to write the balanced chemical equation for this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, the, the reactant side of the reaction. And so I take the two reactants, I write them down, I separate them by a plus sign, and then I draw a right hour to the right of them. That's your first step in writing the reaction. Go ahead and take write that down if you don't have it yet. Now what I want you to do is... Um, using your double exchange or double replacement skills, what are the products? So we've been dealing with only uh, double exchange or double replacement reactions for this unit, acid-base neutralization or precipitate reactions. They're all sort of the, do the same thing. They exchange partners. All right, so what are the partners that are being exchanged here? What are the products that you're going to make? 
great. Here are the products, silver hydroxide and sodium nitrate. So the silver hydroxide is your precipitate. That's why I marked it with an S. Everything else is aqueous, just so you know. But this is the precipitate here. All right, let's do the same thing with reaction two. Um, you're going to determine if it's an acid ba base neutralization or precipitate reaction by figuring out for each reactant if it's an acid base or salt. Okay, so reactant A is a base, reactant B is an acid, so this will be an acid base neutralization. Okay, so we may go try and set up the balanced chemical equation by writing down our reaction, our two reactants, and then trying to figure out what the products are. But for NH3, it's a bit tricky um, because remember, NH3, when you put it in water, it actually forms NH4OH, ammonium hydroxide. And that's really what's reacting with the sulfuric acid, the H2SO4. So um, I'm going to help you out by writing down the two ways that we can write this. We can write this in the abbreviated form, or we can write it as. Um, the actual form. So in the abbreviated form, I just write down the two reactants, NH3 and H2SO4, and I just take away, um, um, I add the hydrogens to the NH3 to form NH4, which is the ammonium, and um, what's left over is the SO4. So this is the abbreviated form. It's a, maybe a bit confusing if you're not used to seeing it. However, for the other form, um, which is the what's actually happening, we write NH3 as NH4OH. So if you rewrite it that way and then rewrite the H2SO4, you can see the formation of your salt and water. Because remember, acid and base makes a salt and water. By the way, this will not be on the exam, but it is something that we covered. So don't freak out now if you're like, oh crap, this is something else I have to know. Like, don't freak out about it. You will have um, more time to get used to seeing these sort of things. It won't be on the test. Okay, so look at this reaction. Um, take a look, make sure that it's balanced, and if it's not balanced, go ahead and balance it. Okay, so that reaction was not balanced, so um, I balanced both of them. Um, in either case, we can see that the we need double the amount of the base to the acid. And if you do the, the full-on reaction, um, your product would be um, two waters. Okay, now we're going to try reaction three. Um, once you take a look at that one, again, determine if it's an acid base um, neutralization or a precipitate reaction. So HCl is an acid and calcium hydroxide is a base, so this will be an, an, a neutralization reaction. All right, and now for reaction three, since we've since you've seen a couple of examples now, I want you to write down the um, balanced chemical equation for reaction three. First, start by writing the reactants and for predicting the products. Once you have that, go back and check to see if it needs to be balanced. Okay, so this um, would be the reactants and the products. And in order to balance it, we would need tw twice the amount of HCl. Um, and that would form two waters. So our balanced chemical equation looks like this. Okay, last one, um, reaction four, acid-base neutralization or precipitate, precipitate reaction. Great, these are two salts, so it's a precipitate reaction. And when I write out the reaction here, what um, you should notice is that the products, uh, silver nitrate and ammonium acetate are both um, soluble in water. So as a result, this actually has is no reaction. Okay, all of that work was just sort of to set up to figure out um, if we have an excess base or if, our, if we have a base as a product. So let's take a look at um, uh, reaction one. And the answer to question one is A. So A is the one where the pH is greater than seven, meaning we have a base. Okay, so let's check that out. The product, silver hydroxide, is a base. It's a metal hydroxide. So since the reaction one, the product is a base, the pH will be greater than seven. So that's why the answer for question one is A. 
And actually, there's no mistake on uh, question one. This this one works. Let's see why the other ones do not work. Um, reaction two, we know it's an acid-base neutralization reaction. So what we need to figure out is if the base in H3 is an excess or not. So to figure that out, we're going to use the mole ratios in the balanced chemical equation. We can see it's a two to one mole ratio. Now they told us from the beginning that we have 100 milliliters of each solution. So we don't have to worry about converting molarity into moles since the volumes of both solutions are the same. If the volumes were different, we would have to get the moles. So since the volumes are the same, we're just going to look at these numbers and sort of treat the molarity as moles. So let's think in our mind, this is two moles of that and two moles of H2SO4. Well, um, according to the balanced chemical equation, I need double the amount of ammonia to H2SO4 because it's a two to one ratio. And since I have, um, so for two moles of NH3, I would only need one mole of H2SO4, but I have two moles of it. So in that case, um, the H2SO4 is in excess. So therefore, the um, if H2SO4 is in excess, that means the solution is going to be acidic, pH will be less than seven. That's why reaction two doesn't work because the excess react reactant here is H2SO4, my acid. Let's try it with reaction three. So again, it's an acid-base neutralization reaction. So again, I need to ask myself, hmm, is my base in excess? And if it's in excess, then I know the pH will be greater than seven. And if it's not, then um, it won't. So what's the excess here? So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use our mole ratios. Why don't you to take a moment to determine what's the excess? Again, because the volumes are the same, we can treat molarity as moles. And so in your mind, you could just read this as two moles and one mole. Great, there's no excess here because according to the balanced chemical equation, we need a two to one ratio of acid to base. And if we have two moles of acid and one mole of our base, then well, that means we have what we need for each one. So the pH, um, so it's neutral. So the pH should be approximately seven. For the very last one, reaction four, um, the one that led to no reaction, there's no base as a reactant. So that means that for the precipitate reaction, um, we can't form a base as a product. Um, so, and also the reactant cannot be in excess. So there's no way that reaction four was an option. Okay, I just wanna quickly recap what we've done and then talk about next steps. Um, so in summary, what we did was we read and analyzed the problem. We determined what, what does pH greater than seven mean? It means it's basic. Um, we also looked at what we were given. We were given two reactants. And so we knew um, from there what we needed to do. So we figured out what pH meant and then we made a plan to write a balanced chemical equation so that we can determine which base is in excess and or, or if we had a base as a product. And that was the next thing that we did. And then finally we solved it. And what we to solve it, we wrote the chemical balance chemical equations for all of them, and then use that to figure out um, which one which reaction which reaction either had a base as a product or excess base. Okay, so next steps. Um, what I strongly suggest you do is I suggest you make your own type of problem like this, where you set up a table where you have reactions one, two, three, and four, and reactant A and B. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose some reactants. Um, you should choose react acid and base reaction uh, reactants for neutralization reaction. You should choose a precipitate reaction, it could be two salts. Um, and you can have a situation where just like here where the, co the concentrations of each thing were, could be different, but the volumes were the same. So in this problem, they said 100 milliliters of each reactant. You could choose different volumes and same concentration. So in this case, you can have like all the reactants are one molar, um, but the volumes, you would put the volumes in the table, 50 milliliters, 25 milliliters, et cetera. And then the final thing, you can have different volumes and different concentrations. So these will be like different layers of how you can make this problem your own. Um, but you got to choose your reactants different and then either different concentrations and or volumes. In addition, you need a goal. So you also need to choose what your pH is going to be. Is it going to be greater than seven, less than seven? Is it going to be neutral? And this is how you would make your own problem. Um, for this and I strongly recommend you do that. 
All right. I hope you find this video helpful. Have a quality day.